I caught a tremendous fish and held him beside the boat, half out of the water, with my hook fast in a corner of his mouth. He didn't fight. He hadn't fought at all. He hung a grunting weight, battered and venerable and homely. Here and there, his brown skin hung in strips, like ancient wallpaper, and its pattern of darker brown was like wallpaper, shapes like full brown roses, stained and lost through age. He was speckled with barnacles, fine rosettes of lime, and infested with tiny white sea lice, and underneath two or three rags of green weed hung down. While his gills were breathing in the terrible oxygen, the frightening gills, fresh and crisp with blood, they can cut so badly. I thought of the coarse white flesh, packed in like feathers, the big bones and the little bones, the dramatic reds and blacks of his shiny entrails, and the pink swim bladder like a big peony. I looked into his eyes, which were far larger than mine, but shallower and yellowed. The irises backed and packed with tarnished tinfoil seen through the lenses of old scratched icing glass. They shifted a little, but not to return my stare. It was more like the tipping of an object toward the light. I admired his sullen face, the mechanism of his jaw, and then I saw that from his lower lip, if you could call it a lip, grim, wet, and weapon-like, hung five old pieces of fishing line, or four, and a wire leader with the swivel still attached, with all the, their big five hooks. Today we will be analyzing the fish by Elizabeth Bishop using the soapstone method. So, we can infer that the speaker is in fact Elizabeth Bishop, due to the first person I seen at the beginning of the poem. Elizabeth Bishop was a 20th century poet who was left a hefty inheritance by her family. Her dad died when she was very young and her mother was institutionalized. She is known for spending years working on a single poem and she is also known for her description and imagery throughout poems. The occasion of this poem describes Elizabeth on a fishing trip and she catches a fish and this is not just any fish it's very large, it appears to be old, and Elizabeth develops a relationship with this fish, and I guess the fish gains her respect, and she describes this fish with personification and gives it an identity. There doesn't appear to be a certain audience for this poem. Um, anyone reading this poem could appreciate and understand the relationship that Elizabeth describes between her and this fish and appreciate what is happening and understanding how she feels about the fish and eventually what makes her have the decision to release the fish. The purpose of this poem is to describe and develop the relationship between Elizabeth and this fish that she caught and she describes the fish with extreme detail with a ton of colors and imagery and personification that shows the audience how she developed this relationship and why she came to the conclusion that she's going to release the fish. I think that without a doubt the subject of the poem is the fish and going through some of the description of the fish we get a lot of colors specifically brown skin that hung in strips or dramatic reds and blacks, pink swim bladder, and there are plenty more Sh yellowed. There's a lot of color going into this fish and describing this fish, and y you can see that the fish is old, specifically by saying that there was five old pieces of fish line and wire in the fish's lip and this shows how the fish is old and also using descriptions like ancient wallpaper and barnacles to show the growth on this fish and it's old and it develops the fish and it makes the audience see where Elizabeth is coming from when she develops respect and care for the fish the tone of this poem begins as very inquisitive and Elizabeth is looking at the fish and, a, and looking at the details and describing it and then I would say the poem shifts into a more sympathetic or sweet tone and Elizabeth respects the fish and admires the fish and this ultimately leads to her releasing the fish. So a shift from inquisitive to sympathetic tone. I think it's very interesting that throughout the poem 
there is constantly description of the color of the fish and at the end there is repetition of a rainbow 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 and I think this could be interpreted as the speaker Elizabeth putting everything together all the colors and knowledge she has just from looking at the fish and putting it into one big picture that I guess could form a rainbow and this ultimately leads to her decision of she respects the fish, she admires the fish and what it's been through, and she releases it. A few themes from the poem could be the theme of choice. Um, the speaker Elizabeth has the choice to either keep the fish or release it. And this, she appears to begin at the beginning of the poem, she wants to keep the fish. And once she has looked over the fish and described it, she has shifted into releasing the fish and she has gained respect for the fish and it shows the evolution of the judgment of the speaker. Another potential theme could be the theme of power. Elizabeth, the speaker, has complete and total power over this fish and what she chooses to do with her power really shows what kind of person she is. She could have easily kept the fish but Seeing what the fish has been through, she uses her power for good, to release the fish and to do what she believes is right. So it's a balance of power and the speaker's use and manipulation of power, according to her own judgment and morals.